Okay, now our plasma's spent approximately 20 minutes in the water bath. We have added hot water twice to keep the water bath at optimum temperature of 35 to 40 degrees. And now I'm gonna set about drying the plasma and spiking it with the, trans with the giving set. Thanks, Renee. So basically it's a good idea to dry the plasma as much as you can. At this point, it's quite okay to undo the tape that's holding the transfusion ports on the bag and remove that tape and continue the drying. Okay, so now we have our sterile transfusion ports. I'll now tear one of those open, which is going to allow access for the giving set. You can see now, that's where the giving set spikes into the bag. Okay, now we get our blood administration set. You will have read from the label, no doubt, that a blood administration set must be used when you're administering plasma. We use the Sangofix ES that's made by Braun but there are, are others, as long as it's a blood administration set. The reason we have to use a blood administration set is whenever f frozen plasma is thawed, you will get small fibrin particles, either macroscopic or microscopic, that form in the plasma. These must be filtered out or else there's a chance of an embolism occurring while you are administering the plasma. And the most common place for these is in the lungs or the brain. And I think you would agree that neither of those places are very good to have blocked arteries. So now I'm going to remove the Sangafix ES from its packet and demonstrate some, some salient features. First, we take off the plastic sleeve and also this plastic guard on here needs to come off. So I'll show you now, this is the uh, drip chamber with, this is the drip chamber, this is this, the 200 micron filter, and that's what's gonna filter out the fibrin clots, fibrin particles or clots, if there are any in fact there. This is the sterile uh, transfusion port. So the first thing we need to do is to close the tap by rolling the wheel along. This is so plasma doesn't run all over the floor after you spike the bag. This is a sterile uh, giving set, obviously. I just insert it and I twist as I push. And that's to stop you actually piercing the side of the bag and allowing the plasma to leak. Okay, now we're ready to fill our drip chamber. We've got our plasma hanging on the drip stand and the drip chamber must be filled to the mark that you see on the, um, on the drip chamber put there by the manufacturer. That's optimum. If there's too little plasma in the drip chamber, we'll get a froth forming. Uh, if there's too much plasma in the drip chamber, we won't be able to see it running. So I'm gently going to squeeze the bag now, the drip chamber. We'll see some plasma running in. And that's about ideal there. Now I'm going to fill the line. To do that, it's best to have the tap as close to the dog end as possible because you don't want to be reaching a long way away to turn it off or to adjust the flow rate. So I have my tap here. I'm now going to take the end off. It's a sterile end. It's protecting the sterility of the actual uh, transfusion point and I'm going to fill the line with plasma. I obviously don't want to spill any but I just want it to run so that it um, fills the line. That way we don't transfuse any air into the dog, which is not desirable. Okay, so now we can see that our plasma line is full. There's a drip of plasma on the end. I'll just shake that off and I will put the sterile cap back in place. This plasma is now, transfusion is now ready to begin.